uh, you know, sadly, we had a lot of companies that reduced, uh, reduced their, their staffing levels. And so limited staff created this, uh, this need for client engagement beyond just voice. And so companies that recognize that, I mean, these are discussions that, uh, you know, Nate and I particularly started having with clients before COVID hit, but really um, has accelerated through this time is how do we how do we engage with our clients beyond just the phone, because we might not have the, the staff to uh, to accommodate that. And then offering being able to find ways to offer uh, real time, uh, real time self service options, whether that's through the website or some other other means of communicating with the organization. So those companies that were looking at that um, were, were successfully offloading um, the voice stress and, and being able to find uh, new and effective ways to engage their, their customers. Consumer engagement, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your, your business is or your business model is. We all engage with, with customers, with consumers, and we don't have to be a, a contact center to, to start thinking about what, our consumer engagement strategies are. And so, you know, for, for a long time, voice, voice has been king. Um, and I would say that it's still king, but now more than ever, I think we're starting to see that, um, you know, we have to find more ways to engage with clients beyond, beyond just voice. But, you know, even before we, we get there to, to define what those different channels or communication paths are, you know, we need to start by um, understanding now more than ever when, when customers contact a business, they're really looking for four, four basic things. Um, and one of those is reliability. So when somebody engages with a business, they want to, they want to know that that business is dependable. Uh, they also are looking for assurance. So they want to make sure that they've might made the right decision and, and we can do that and we can help with that by being, um, by being helpful when we engage with them and meeting expectations during those different interactions. And then the third one, which I actually probably would put at the top of the list is, is empathy. Uh, people want, people want to feel understood and they're looking for personalized attention. And so, you know, we've all been in that situation where we, we call into customer support and we sit on hold forever. Maybe we get asked a couple of automated questions about our, our phone number, um, you know, account number, whatever it is, what we're calling about. And then we finally get to a point where, where somebody picks up and they ask us all those same questions again. Can you imagine that experience now being, um, where you call in and an agent picks up, they already know who you are, they already know what you're calling about, and they already have all of your contact information about whatever it is you're calling in, 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 in about right there in front of them. And then responsiveness would be the fourth thing. Customers don't wanna, they don't wanna wait. You know, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if they're walking into a store, which we can't do right now. Uh, doesn't matter if they're calling in, doesn't matter if they're coming in through uh, you know, through uh, uh, an email or a web chat or something like that, they they just don't want to wait. And so, with those those things in mind, I think now we can form, you know, now we can form this foundation for any um, consumer interaction discussion where we can start looking at technologies like the use of of web chat or um, SMS or email or even social media or or all the advancements that uh, companies like Google are doing with artificial intelligence for self-service. So I think what you, I think what we're going to start to see is that small businesses uh, in particular will start to, to invest in, in not only those products, but start having those discussions. Um, something else I think we're going to start to see is that um, small businesses will begin to open, uh, invest in, uh, more open and flexible communication platforms to bring disparate interactions together into into more of a, a single pane of glass. So we simplify that that technology stack that end users are using, especially now as uh, now as they're working from home. So rather than having to jump into all these different applications, we can have everything all in one simple. Uh, pane of glass and be interacting with uh, with our customers in in different ways. 
if voice is your only method of communicating, chances are that your, your remote workflow, workforce is probably struggling with internal collaboration and meeting customer needs or figuring out how to meet those customer needs. And then worse, you're probably losing out to what could have been potential customers who are now having um, more meaningful engagements with, with somebody else, unfortunately.